welcome back. This is, feels weird. It feels good. It feels really good. Because we haven't recorded in like months. I miss recording. Me too. Podcast episodes. Me too. But it was a nice break. Yeah. And we had thousands of people messaging us every day asking, <laughs> when is the next episode coming out? When are you guys going to talk about more stuff? Thousands. And, and we're here to take care of those people. It's true. So we're back with season two. This is the first episode of season two. And we have a theme or like a season title. Theme. Theme. Let's call it Topic. a theme. Yeah. Um, what's it called? It's called Below the Surface. I had to mouth the words to Adam because <laughs> I always say it wrong. He doesn't, but yeah. I do. It's called Below the Surface. And the tagline is The Secret Lives of Business Owners. Right. Because we find that when we get to talk to people in our office or on Skype or wherever we get to talk to them, is that a, a lot of business owners are kind of like heroes to a lot of people where they started something or they're, you know, people look up to them or think they're a business owner is some kind of weird yeah. unicorn of a person. But in reality, they all just have, they're just people. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to kind of help people get to know that and see that. The other angle that I thought was interesting about coming up with this season's theme is that there's a lot that goes into these things that people see on the outside. So um, whether it's like running a conference or launching an online course or starting a business that needs a brick and mortar location, all of that before you own a business or before you actually do that thing, you kind of take for granted, I think. Um, That's how I feel. Yeah. And then you do it and you have this new appreciation. So I wanted to choose people that we're going to interview based on the fact that they've all done something interesting that takes a lot of hard work, but it's just, it's hard work. It's not like glamorous or anything else. Yeah. I also think that below the surface kind of encapsulates this idea that people who are successful have some kind of advantage. Even mm-hmm. in their personality or experience, or mm-hmm. you know, in whatever. In I'm working with a coaching client right now who has. We've so much worked on shifting kind of her daily responsibility around her wiring and habits and experiences. Yeah. So the things that um, the things that she has a lot of experience in, she can leverage for herself. And what what, what we see a lot also is that is people trying to emulate other business owners or other businesses or brands. And when you don't understand that that brand behind the surface has something going on, um, then you, you end up copying something that you can't even really copy. So we're kind of excited to get to sit and talk to folks and kind of pry into their lives or their stories, figuring out why they do the stuff they do or what, um, Yeah, maybe what's something that most, that doesn't seem obvious Mm -hmm. um, that they actually spend a lot of time on. Yeah. So we thought this specific episode could be a little bit of our own behind the scenes or below the surface topics and things we actually ask people to ask us questions. So questions that I think you normally don't, you don't get to hear people blogging about or talking about. Um, Yeah. Some are funny, some are serious. And so I'm excited to go through them and... Um, after this episode, each interview with our guests will be a little bit more focused on like one specific thing they do or have done. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited too. Yeah. All right. We got really good questions. Do you want to dive in? Yeah. Right. Bring in. Are you going to read them? Yeah. Cool. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. First question from Kate on Twitter. How do you grow and nurture both of your specialties? Um, I currently specialize in two major types of design and I always feel torn. Probably question. to clarify, Kate probably is asking you about design and photography. Got it. Not like you and me balancing got it, got our it. thing. That makes sense. Because she's talking about her two specialties. Right. I get that question a lot, and I actually was just on a panel for um, women in the arts, and I actually ended up talking to one of the panelists beforehand, and I didn't know she was on the panel with me. And she talked about how she does a lot of creative things, and we both joked, who needs to find a niche? Like, that's a dumb piece of advice. And we could relate to each other in that I think when you're creative, um, you naturally want to try a lot of different things. For a while, I really struggled with being a designer and a photographer. And 
it's becoming more natural to me now. But yeah. I remember when I first started shooting professionally, I had a hard time calling myself a photographer. But I don't think you had a lot. really hard time calling yourself a yeah. photographer. Yeah, you were getting paid a decent amount to take photos, mm-hmm. and you still wouldn't call yourself a photographer. Right. It was so cute. I understand. I don't think I've ever struggled with nurturing the two or the three or the four things that I do creatively. But I know that it is difficult from a marketing standpoint. An example would be if you're displaying your work and you do photography, but you don't do design and you're taking pictures of things that are designed or flip it. You provided art direction for a client and you're displaying the photo shoot, but you didn't do the design or the photography. I know that that is difficult to communicate what you did and what you didn't do, but... We see that all the time where, yeah. where we're working with a client's logo and we're taking photos of a thing um, or they have labels already designed or we designed the labels, but we didn't do the photography. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, yeah. it's always, you always have to help your website visitor or your audience or your customer understand what you're doing. And so yeah, I think if you flip it the other way in that you you don't have a niche, but someone who is looking for a designer or looking for a photographer or looking for somebody with two separate specialties, you bring something different to the table and yeah. you probably approach both of them differently. Yeah. And I, I think, I think yeah. it can be a, it can be an advantage, um, from a branding standpoint in that you're memorable in some kind of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like to specifically to answer Kate's question, I don't nurture my design side as much. I think that a lot of the work that I do that's not design influences my creativity, but I spend a lot more time understanding my, the craft of photography than design. And design to me feels a little bit more self-taught. Even though I taught myself photography, I feel like I seek out a lot more um, online courses and tutorials and ask questions when it comes to photography and with design I sort of go with what I know and that always won't always be the case I could see that yeah that's fascinating but you also started design a lot earlier Mm -hmm. and so that that's like at a different I went to school for design I mean it was called I think it was called new media yeah because graphic design wasn't a word it was just called like stuff on computers (laughs) (laughs) but I feel like I don't even count that as Education, right. yeah. even though I know it was a great foundation and it's where you get, you first open Photoshop. But so I do think it's talking about all of it and it's giving people a little bit of education yourself around what you do. Yeah. And it'd be easy for me to just say, I fo- do photo, I do photos. <laughs> I'm a photographer. <laughs> I do photos. <laughs> it'd be easy for you to talk about it in a vague way, get yeah. specific. Now, when I talk to people, I say, I take pictures of food and objects, sometimes people, but not often. Yeah. So. It's, you know, I also think it's just about balancing your time and figuring out how do you, if you think about nurturing, so this idea of nurturing and developing yourself, you just have to spend time learning and getting better at it. So it just requires effort and intention and saying, I'm going to try this today. Um, This is different, but like I spend a lot of time writing and a lot of time coaching. Mm Mm-hmm. And I work on both of those things and I go find resources on how to ask better questions or guide people through, you know, how to be better at the craft of coaching and then also how to be better at the craft of writing. But those two things look massively different as far as practicing them or learning or whatever. Well, I even feel like, too, when I'm being paid to do one type of thing. So let's say I have a lot of photography work in front of me. It's time I can spend time learning more about design during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel that's just me personally. I feel like when I'm actually doing the work professionally, I don't spend as much time learning during that period, but I can, once that photo shoot is over, reflect and get better based on the experience. Yeah. Um, I think that's cool. Yeah. That's good. Good question, Kate. Great question, Kate. Um, I'm going to ask you this next question and have you start off. Sweet. It's from... I'm assuming Nate, but Nate from Pursuit, <laughs> who is our client and was on season one, uh, tweeted to me, what's the Wonder Jam look like in five years? 
<laughs> I'm asking Adam because he is very futuristic, strategic, yeah. and I'm not. I would just say, Nate, what do you think we should be doing <laughs> in five years? Um, Still funny. working with you, Nate. Ho- it's funny. Hopefully. Um, gosh, this is hard. This is difficult. It's really Allie hard. and I talk about this a lot mm-hmm. behind the scenes, which is the point of talking about all of this. Yeah. What if we were just like If I had to tonight? bet today. <laughs> yeah. If I had to bet today, I would think that the Wonder Jam would grow a lot in the amount of educational and information and resources it puts out mm-hmm. um, to try and help nurture small businesses, freelancers, um, help people kind of get rolling yeah. because that's a big deal. Um, and I think if I was betting on the future, I'd bet there's going to be a lot more freelancers in the future than there are now. Mm. Um, like in the world. Yeah. yeah. I just think that's a trend of people being independent contractors and you're even seeing large corporations hire people as 1099s rather than yeah. W2s. Um, which, which 1099 is what you have if you are a contractor and a W2 is a paid salary yeah. person. Yeah. Um, I also think I'm going to be, you're going to be like around 37 and I'm going to be 35. So I know that for sure will happen. <laughs> We can just I say, can what that's for, in five years, these are the ages of the people, um, <laughs> unless we die. Because uh, that's definitely, yeah, there, it won't be any other age than those. I could see us getting even more, while I, we just talked about how having a niche isn't our jam, I could see us being a little bit more specialized in what we offer people. Mm, and if, how and so? If, so um, maybe like we do... We create campaigns for small businesses in this way because we find that it's the best method. Yeah. And if you want something very small, here's resources that we've created and to empower those people. Yeah. But it takes doing it a few times or a lot of times to refine all of that yeah. and to figure out, you know, the way we do websites is very... Um, tends to be pretty affordable for small businesses, but it's because we've done it a lot and lost a lot of money on them to know (laughs) what corners not to cut or to cut. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think, I think having, that's always been, our heartbeat has always been, how can we help tiny businesses that typically agencies are like priced too high for, or maybe a freelancer or a one person business doesn't have the ability to provide the right services for them. Mm-hmm. I also think team-wise we'll probably be at in five years. I would think my goal would be to sit around like between, always sit around between like five and 12 people on a team Yeah, in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, because... Five would mean someone isn't here anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. We have, we have six, six right now. <laughs> six is good. We yeah. are in the sweet spot. Yeah. Um, but I think that... It's not like grow. We're not. I don't want to grow. I want. I don't want somebody. I don't know. This is five years, so it could change. It's crazy, yeah. I don't want to spend a lot of. I don't want to spend all of my time managing people. People, mm-hmm. and I know that's not how you want to spend all of your time. Um, so, if why, anything, it's like more self sufficient, yeah, driven, experienced people who work. Yeah, less than- I would rather have a team of like seven badasses who can all like handle all of their own everything and then we can collaborate for clients and get and Mm do way more than we could do as one person Mm -hmm. Allie and I both worked inside of agencies and you just see as it scales there are inefficiencies that happen or that come with that size um, which are not fun from a serving small business standpoint and are also not fun from a us doing the type of creative work we like to do standpoint okay next question from Nate (laughs) thanks for asking Pursuit how are things changing internally as team grows? Mm. And I know he's probably asking this because his team is growing too. <laughs> yeah, right. He could have his own episode about this. Right. Um, well, you touched on this. That Was this question about internally, like in our hearts, you know? Maybe. Like oh, in I our emotion, emotionally, yeah. what's it like? We could go through everything, every version of internal, but I don't really <laughs> want to. Um, behind the scenes or below the surface, I think it... In growing your team only accentuates your weaknesses and it's but it's in a nice way. It's not like very public facing. So Adam, you and I can often skip meeting 
between the two of us. Yeah. And when you have, when you're growing your team, that becomes more detrimental. And when you grow a team and you are behind on updating your cash flow doc, that can be frustrating, you know? So when it's just you and I for the past, you know, four years, yeah. all of those things are very forgivable. And I think when you start growing your team internally, those things become way more important. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I also find it seems like to me that you and I are able to stay more focused on the work that we're doing. It's like we're doing less random stuff yeah. between just you and I. Yeah. But we are also probably doing, quote, less stuff in that right. other people are handling things and we're a little bit more focused in on mm-hmm. the work that we're doing. Yeah, I think my personally, internally, it can be very, in, as an introvert, if you don't choose the right people to work around you, I think it could be very exhausting and you create this world for you. I still need time alone to recharge, but I don't get drained by the people that I work alongside that yeah. we've hired. Um, but I also think internally it allows you, no, it doesn't allow you. It, it's easy to all of a sudden feel like you're actually not doing as much work because you're spending time delegating. Mm. But well, like you said, yeah. you're focused more on the most important task. It's not the same at all, but you've experienced this with your coaching clients who are new moms where they can only work one to three hours a day at the maybe very beginning and they have to become very focused and efficient. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I can sort of relate to that yeah. concept. Truth. But internally, it's a lot. I mean, we're working. We have less nights where we're working till like two or three in the morning I than we do used that. to. Yeah. yeah, and we used to do that all the time. Mm-hmm. But there is also this. Um, you have other people that you're thinking of taking care of. How are they working? Do they have work yeah. they're doing? Are they learning and developing and yeah. like nurturing those things along? And so, um, it's almost like you have more to think about, but. Also, less. other people can share the work, Yeah, which is cool. It's been sure. really cool. We didn't want to hire. We never set out to hire people ever. It's just that people who are interns were awesome and we liked being around them. Mm-hmm. And so we're like, oh, I wouldn't hate coming into work if these people worked here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that would be the case f- for everybody, you know. I also think for me, it wasn't until I had people helping me with my workload that I realized I had too much on my plate. Oh, yeah. So I think for years I could be like, I don't want to hire people. People are annoying. Then you find the right people and then you get a taste of, oh, I don't have to do all of this by myself. Yeah. And so because I handle more of the production, to be able to have people to help with that has allowed me to, like, I go out and I have a drink way more often than I have the past three years. That's what I'm talking about. I've been able to take... I've been gone every weekend. So that's what it's like internally. It's like <laughs> Allie's drinking more out of like <laughs> In a, a relaxed. Because <laughs> um, when you're stressed, you don't drink. You, no, you drink I, when you're relaxed. Yeah, for sure. So and not I, everybody is the same way. True. They drink when they're stressed. Um, that's a good question. It is a good question. That's a good one. I'll keep going with, because some people have asked multiple ones. So what's our one new dream client? Which I've actually never thought about. I don't really set out like, oh, I, I hope to work with them. If anything, I'm like scared because client, we have amazing clients and we don't have any bad clients, but it's still this tightrope of, do I want to be their friend? Do I just want to be yeah. their cl- customer? Yeah. I want to do a celebrity cookbook. Yeah. For sure. A celebrity cookbook I would cookbook even take like sweet. a D-list celebrity. Yeah. Just something. A name droppable. Yeah. Yeah. I would do, for sure, um, Whitney from, like, The Hills Cookbook. That's great. That's You'd be into that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Oh, man. I can't even think of a D-list celebrity, probably. Oh, man. Who else does, like, food, Michael? Uh, I mean, she's not D-list, but, like, Chrissy Teigen. That's, like, yeah. I, very I actually follow her food cookbook ph- photographer, and she's, she's, like, one of my favorites. Yeah. Her name's Aubrey. Probably, like... Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Wait, you consider her D-list? 
No, she's not D-list because <laughs> oh, okay. she does food. Like food yeah, people, yeah. yeah. She's D-list to me because I don't like her. But. Yeah. <laughs> you gr- it's a grade for you she's that D-list. way. Um, Who are A-list celebrities that you actually count love. as D-list? I would also... In oh, the- I know somebody. Who? Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie <gasps> Prince Jr. Oh, yeah. are, they do hella cookbooks. Yeah. All kinds of cookbooks. And I see that he was doing like an Eminem sponsored ad yeah, in my Instagram. No, they're very foodie. The rapper or like the candy? Freddie Prince Jr.? No, Eminem. Oh, <laughs> candies. Yeah, Freddie Prince Jr., the rapper. He's, no, no, Freddie Prince Jr., Eminem. about Eminem, the what rapper. What if Freddie Prince Jr. was doing Eminem ads? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. He's like, his albums were great. Yeah. No, but yeah, that, they do a lot of food stuff. Okay. And they're definitely D-list. Okay, yeah, That's definitely. Fun. But for me, my heart, they're A-list because I grew up watching the movies. Because of the age that we are, yeah. yeah. Um... The last question that Nate asked is when intern Olivia is coming back. When is she coming back? That's well, a good idea. That's she, a good idea. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, Olivia, when are you coming back? Yeah, where are you? She will be back. Um, we're going to actually, yeah, we're going to go visit her in college and probably uh, s- steal her mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. drop her out of college. So I've had two clients be like, is Olivia still there to do writing? What if you called in because you can maybe sound a little bit like her mm-hmm. voice on the phone and, and then be like and drop out of college and be like, hey, I'm not coming to class anymore. All this stuff okay. like get ruin her, right. ruin her college career. I think my mom will get mad at me if I abduct her. But, but you know, if you and yeah, you can definitely like <laughs> drop out of college. Over <laughs> maybe the phone. she's more she's more critical, and I can just switch places with her because we kind of look alike. Yeah. <laughs> no, it'd be sweet. It'd be sweet if that you doesn't work. let's. Because I think if we like ruin all of her opportunities, Mm -hmm. she would fall back into working with us. True. So if we have to, we have to kind of like sabotage every other opportunity she has. True. Then she'll be here. But maybe in the summer. Who knows? That'd be good. Yeah. Um, Next question from Angelica on Twitter. What does the next phase of scaling look like and what are you doing now to prepare? So maybe we could talk a little bit more into in detail about the idea of growing education. Yeah. And what would we be doing now to grow if we ever wanted to hire another person? Right. So Angelica has a good question. So we started off as a two person business and had no real interest or thought of scaling. We liked having interns. Um, we also liked not having people we managed. Yeah. Um, and so we're in the middle of right now, this is very much like below the surface thing, right? So we're in the middle now of transitioning our cash flow into being something that can um, hold and sustain two people in a planned out way to something that can hold and sustain six people in a planned out way. And we were not using debt to do that. So a lot of small businesses might take out a credit line or a small business loan to kind of like help cash flow some of that. $20,000, $50,000. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, We're not doing that, which... Someone else might tell us that we should, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. Um, so Let we're trying know. to... Gr- yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Right. In, right In the comments, tell us how to get money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, no, but we're... So we're working on that. And the, so that's one of the things that we're doing is making sure that our financials are good so that as everybody earns more money, the business can handle that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we're doing to take care of scaling is we're spending a lot of time... We spend a lot of time training everybody and making sure that our systems work right. So Mm -hmm. um, if we had a team that had been around for seven years and someone said, like, this project management software is annoying, I would not care and be like, this is what we use. But now every time that somebody thinks, hey, this might not work well, like, we need to figure that out now because if we're all going to be here for a while, then that will just be a repetitive problem. Yeah. Yeah. I can try to think that's the studio stuff. So it's just training everybody Mm -hmm. to get up to. And I think overall, and we'll talk a little bit about this later in the season, but in order to think long term about selling or selling education or resources that we actually believe in, we have to have an audience that's big enough. And a lot of people come to us and they want to, you know, sell thousands and thousands of signups to like an online course or an ebook or something like that. And they only have 400 people that follow them. Yeah. You know, we've been spending a lot of time organically growing our own personal accounts and just sharing authentically as the wonder jam, but there gets to be, you have to get in front of new people and you have to, um, that takes time. Yeah. We don't, it doesn't work if you buy followers. Right. And we yeah. wouldn't want to do that. Or it also doesn't work if you don't grow. Yeah. Um, and so we, we're intentionally working through our marketing. Like mm-hmm. we're it, in the middle of right after we record this, 
we have a meeting where we're just thinking about how do we rethink our own marketing. Yeah. Because our marketing worked really well for a company of two people. Yep. And is that the same thing that we need for a company of six people mm-hmm. or a company that also sells like ebooks and resources and things like that? Yep. So we got we got to figure that out. Yeah. So that's something that we're working on. Um, yeah. As, and as we scale. Love it. Next question is from Josh. He has a few. And these some of these get a little funny, which I like. I like funny questions. Yeah. What wakes us up in the middle of the night? <laughs> Um, I actually, I sleep really well. <laughs> yeah. I don't wake up thinking about anything. I sleep through the night. Oh man. Um, do you wake up thinking about anything? No, all I can think of is like, I have to pee. Yeah. I think Dash? does Dash wake you up? <laughs> I don't wake up. Oh yeah. Dash, Dash wakes me up all the time. Thanks for, Adam wakes thanks up. for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, it Honestly, does remind no. me cause he lays in the middle of us on his side he and you. he puts his feet right to my back. And then he does like little, because he's having little doggy dreams. He kind of like like runs and kicking me. Yeah, he's kicking me a little bit. Um, It's a massage. There are some times where he'll like just immediately just put his like little paw on my shoulder. And I'm like, Allie? And I'm like, no. No, it's him. Yeah. I do not wake up at night. I don't think about anything. Um, I will randomly think about weird obscure things that I want to know right before I fall asleep. But I do not (laughs) think about work. When I lay down to sleep yeah. and before I wake up. What do you, well, uh, what do you think, what random obscure things do you think about? Oh, like the other night I thought about. Like conspiracy theories? Conspiracy stuff? theories or like um, weird facts that like can a tornado actually like be created from a hurricane. This is actually, so this is like, the Sharknado oh, you want to know, this like is my deep weird. below the surface because Allie I have always this thing. does this thing before she falls so, asleep. I don't know what this says about me. Comment below. <laughs> I like that we say comment below and there's no comments. Um, I have to, I don't know if I have to, but I think about something very horribly tragic about myself in order to be able to fall asleep. So it'll it be like, I, tr- I trip and fall and like crack my head open and die. And then I'm like, okay, go to bed now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like but this meditation on the worst. I almost think though, cause we, we read a lot about like, what is it like blue zones, blue areas yeah. of people who live the longest. And it's people who think or talk about death every day. And I think that's like my way of doing it. Cause it's always me dying. And then I kind of, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to die someday. Yeah. And these are all the different ways I could die. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm at peace. They're a great. They're like one of the most fascinating follows on Twitter um, because they're always. What's the account? Uh, we'll, we'll you'll just have to like. It. Yeah. We'll you'll have to just it. or just search blue zones. Okay. Um, if you're like on your phone right now. Yeah. You could probably just do that. On or your look phone it up also. before you go to bed. Right. Um, but, oh. Yeah. Next question. Who thinks the office is dirty and needs cleaned first? Everyone has their own tolerance level. It's about so it's about who complains first. So Josh asked. Let's and, um, we'll say one, two, three, and say okay. the same the name. One, Michael, you can play this game too. One, one two, two, three. three. Erica. I was gonna oh, say I Erica. Oh, Annie. Erica, most definitely. No, okay. Well, actually, Erica is dishes. <laughs> Annie is the everything. Office. Yeah. yeah. Annie dishes. definitely will be like you guys. Like this is gross. Yeah. Or like new rule. And I love it because right. Adam and I are not clean freaks. So I think so, but but I would argue with your selection of Annie, and I would say Erica because Erica wouldn't even tell anyone to do something; she would just clean all of it. But I think herself. I'm. But I think Erica's just dishes. Yeah, Annie's right. like the floor. Yeah. Right. And like leaving crumbs that have ants on. Them. I think. <laughs> Which is gross. Which is a real story that happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We have, I have no way to like know if this is true or not. But I would bet that Erica has cleaned so much of this office so many times. Without saying anything. That hasn't said anything or did it after like after we had all but left was, or before we all got here. Okay, but his question was it's about who complains first. Oh, so I think Annie's right. Yeah. Annie. Thanks, Annie. Annie Keeping complains clean. first. Thanks so for, thank you. And she'll take action. Thank to both of you because yeah. that stuff does not we come. You should just build something and like see who cleans. How long? <laughs> yeah. Do videos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do videos is a horrible way. To Let's like do it. videos <laughs> and do photos. Josh's last question. Most played Christmas movie. And when is it appropriate to start watching Christmas movies? Most played Christmas movie. 
Isn't yours a family stone? No. Mm. We were talking about that one. Probably White Christmas. Yeah, most definitely yeah. it's White Christmas. Most played. I will watch that every night between like th- the day after <laughs> yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas while and I fall asleep. Yeah. In like Christmas vacation for me. I watch yeah. that all the time. And I watch Elf like so repeatedly. I, I watch them the day after Thanksgiving. I mean it's appropriate. I definitely go hard. So I can't start before <laughs> yeah. or I'll get tired of yeah. it. Yeah. I actually not, don't know if I'll get tired of it. Yeah. It's it's just awkward if you're like if we're doing a movie night sometime yeah. in September and you're like, Can we watch a Christmas yeah. movie? It's and just everyone's different. like uh, I really love the magical feeling of like Thanksgiving's over. The radio's playing 24-hour Christmas music. It's time, to, it's time to go. It's time to enjoy the only time I like It's winter. time to rage <laughs> in a Christmas way. <laughs> okay, back to a serious question. Haley on Twitter asks, have you guys made any big mistakes? <laughs> That's yeah. a big question. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so curious. I Well, I'll, I, I'll preface. There's a follow-up. Or realize you had to do something differently to keep your business profitable and successful. <laughs> That's yeah. a good reframing, but... You but there's been a lot first? of time because yeah. this is so the Wonder Jam is all of our. This is also a behind below the surface thing. Yeah. One, the Wonder Jam is 100 percent of our household income, and two, everybody's different. But we none of this was financed. It was financed by itself. So the Wonder Jam has to make money for Adam and Allie to have any money. Yeah. And so you know, some businesses can go through a bad spell. Yeah. Or you can read about like in retail, right? Like some of the big retailers are losing money every month. Yep. Or they're going backwards. We can't do they that. They can do that. Yeah. We can't. Right. If we go backwards too many months in a row, then Everyone all of a sudden survived. you're going to see me like updating my LinkedIn pretty hard. You know? <laughs> I'm adding so <laughs> many people. Yeah. Actually, I really do sometimes accidentally add so many people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so for us, that's a big deal. So mm-hmm. there's, we, we probably are pretty in touch with those moments where yeah. um, we've had moments where we've had to figure out like, hey, we need to not pay some of these bills to make sure that we can keep paying ourselves. Yeah. So like we have to do some of the math. So we've yeah. definitely bumped into. And that's, that's stuff that people don't talk about. You don't talk about how in when you're starting a business and you're not operating with a $500,000, $500, business loan, you do have to say, hey, I'm going to pay this credit card late because, like, I want to make sure that the electric stays on, yeah. you know. And there is, from the perspective of building your credit score or whatever, a lot of people have different opinions about what's the best method, but you have to decide for yourself your priorities. Um, what were some big ones? Do you remember any of those? Um, you know, the other thing I would say, Haley, is that we've – all of those bad decisions that we've had r- would drive home a lesson that I think helps Sticks us be you. better today. Yeah. I mean, that's like true of life. Right. You and have so to make them. Even the things that are most obviously a bad decision to me now were things that we worked through a project in. Mm-hmm. Um, I can we, name some. We signed up for a gigantic retainer that we like got way out of scope mm-hmm. and we could not. It was like signed 12 month agreement and it was not worth trying to can't you know trying to get out of but it also was too much money that we couldn't quit it so it was it was almost like we could have survived off of that one project Mm -hmm. but to keep that one project we had to work like psychotic people yeah not worth it yeah yeah, not i think anytime we have jumped into a project too quickly without a lot of um conversation or guidelines or goals talked about in the past we always um, regret that 2017 has been the year of no, we've not had a single bad client. No. And I was just visiting with one of my best friends and she's, we're sitting in our living room and she's like, do you have any crazy clients right now? And I'm like, no, they're honestly all amazing. But a client can be really nice and awesome and, and pay, but if there's not any um, end date or end goal agreed upon, it can very much bloat. And that hurts a small business mm-hmm. like ours. Um, anytime... Things take 40 more hours than you think. That's 40 more hours that you're not billing for something else. And so that's been a big mistake. Another one has been getting, um, when I was first starting off, taking home all of my money uh, and not keeping any in the business, just financially from a tax standpoint, was yeah. dumb. Yeah. Um, we ended one year with like a $12,000 tax bill and no money to pay it, Yeah. which sets you backwards pretty hard. Yeah. 
Whereas that first time, I actually had a huge tax bill, and if I had written things off, I wouldn't have had to owe that much. Yeah. Um, another mistake I think we made was um, mm. trying to do really small projects can actually... It's changing now that we have more people who can take on these this work, but when it was just you and I... I feel like there was times where we would just want to help everyone yeah. and we were not charging. Like people would ask for all these little things and you would mention like at one point you probably have given away many hours of your time for free. <laughs> yeah, right. And if you add that yeah. all up, that's just a lot of non-billable Like time. if I had been paid $5 an hour, it still would have been I would better. have been better than... Just doing, doing everything for yeah. free. I think it's really hard when you're... And, and we know that a lot of our clients who have even brick-and-mortar product-based businesses, it's people want things for free all the time. Like, can you donate this? Can you just can you just do this? Yeah. Um, and I know I was just on that panel that I mentioned with Autumn Theodore Photography. Autumn is her name. Um, and she mentioned she kind of... Which I love. She does... She accepts like two to three pro bono clients per year. Yeah. And it really gives that like, hey, everyone can enter. You know, I do offer my services for free, but it's very much on her terms, which yeah. I like. Yeah. I think it's very cool. Um, we should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Um, How, okay, Mike Albert, mm-hmm. who does, he helps us with our finances. He, he's sort of our consultant. Yeah. Helps us with our cash flow. He's the best. He's the best. He asks, how do you make a killer office soundtrack? Oh, that's good. He knows that we have great music because he's worked in here sometimes or he meets yeah. here. And we do have good music. Right. You talk a little bit about how you Well, we do. Music. There's a different, like, there's a lot of different ways that's to make a good below soundtrack. below the surface. You got to Right, but I'll, so I'll tell, like, a recent one that we did okay. is I, I went around the office um, on Spotify. Yeah. Um, well, first thing I did is I went around the office. I had everybody submit um, two songs mm-hmm. that they wanted to listen to while they work. Yep. So I always use that as a caveat because there's other songs you want to listen to like while you're getting drunk or right. while you're like doing clean, yoga, yeah. but like while you're working because that's kind of what everyone's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I put two songs from every person on that playlist and then I play the... You know, on Spotify, you can say like play playlist radio where like it picks, makes... A, a track, radio station yeah, based like on that. that playlist. And so as songs are in there that are really good or that people like, we I'll pull them into mm-hmm. that. We also have playlist. different music we play like when specifically a client's here. Sometimes it's very like zen instrumental. Yeah. And then we also have a, a playlist from years ago that you and our friend Benji made with a song from every year starting yeah. in the 70s, yeah. 60s. Um, which All songs awesome. from like the top ten Billboard, heart, you know, Billboard charts for that year. Yeah. Um, so it's like very diverse. Yep. Which is fun. Everyone from like every generation. That's called the Winter Jam Party. If you get onto, uh, I think if you search that on the Spotify, you'll find it. Cool. It's a good one. It is. Good. It's like I love that never one. fails, and people who have been to a lot of things here still comment on yeah. it. Yeah. Because there's just so much that it's not like, oh yeah, this is that one playlist from that one year. Yeah. Um, what about Rumors Radio? Mm, yeah, rumors true. radio is something. So, yeah, the other that yeah, actually was that's pretty. Probably the best. Radio that is really great. Yeah, that's that was a great soundtrack, but not a great. It was not productive soundtrack, but it was yeah. so entertaining. Yeah, true. <laughs> so with rumors radio, we just picked one song, "Rumors" yeah. by Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan, which is great. Which is a great song. Even better music video. <laughs> yeah. it, it is good. It's not a D-list celebrity nor a D-list song. True. Um, and then we just made a radio station based on that song and it was like mostly Aaron Carter <laughs> and <laughs> Pussycat one, Dolls yeah. and Dan, there was some yeah, Danity Kane. Danity Kane in that there. actually sucked. There was a what lot, but there was a lot of Aaron Carter. <laughs> like <laughs> too much Aaron. There's a song called Oh Aaron and it's really bad <laughs> slash good. It was probably because of all that like Lindsay Lohan yeah, Aaron Carter. It's just like duff bad. drama. Like, yeah. just, oh, yeah. But it's just funny that, that somehow Spotify in its music algorithm is like taking celebrity controversy yeah. in there. Um, oh my gosh. Quality. That's a big deal. I have one called, um, but if you want to become the type of person who makes good playlists repeatedly, you have to do homework and constantly be adding to, like it has to be a project that you work on. So yeah. Michael, producer Michael on his website, he has actually listed all the 
podcast or all the playlists that he puts together. Um, he yeah. like makes his own album or cover art for them. Yep. Like you got to work on it. So we have one more question nice. and it's from past intern Jamie. She asks, how do you balance what pays the bills versus what satisfies you creative creatively? Mm. I was about to say creativity Lee. <laughs> creativity Lee. Um, That's a great question. Yeah, uh, I think it is a ever evolving answer because That's exactly what I was going to say. What satisfies you creatively isn't always the same, and it what can't pays, be the same. Yeah, and it, what pays the bills isn't always the same. Right. So, I'll talk. I'll give my little minute spiel and then you can okay and then we can like talk and then we, we can do be it. like oh you can be like, you oh, say thing idea. i'll say thing like, and yeah. then we'll kind of like back and forth banter a little okay, bit okay. and then yeah. probably come to a good conclusion good like a tie off point at the yeah. end of this i'm giving you a thumbs up right now great um i have shifted my mindset lately that anything can satisfy me creatively like anything can be really fun and even if the client doesn't buy into it or choose that concept, that creative process was still beneficial for me. I remember talking to um, internet and real life friend, Emily Jefford. She's a painter. You should check out her work. I love everything she does. She, We were getting coffee and she said something about the process of painting. Even if my paintings tend to be the same subject matter, the process has to be what is amazing for me. Mm. Like whether it's how I treat my day or the music or, you know, the feeling or opening the windows, all of that is just as important, if not more than the actual outcome. And so I present my work and while I still get butterflies and all of that, um, it allows me to sell the concept that I'm really excited about. And even if they don't, again, if they don't pick it, I still was able to share it. So, yeah. Yeah. What would you say? I would say, well, one of the points that you made in there about practice that Emily talked about is mm-hmm. is a concept that's inside of the book that I love called The Talent Code mm-hmm. that's all about how people develop skills and abilities. Um, and in The Talent Code, they talk about people falling in love with practice. Yeah. So all the best athletes love practicing. Um, from a soccer player spending a 1,000 hours on the foot placement or the angle of their foot when they're kicking up, like those little details yeah make people really excited and they get really engaged just in practice. Mm -hmm. Um, You find that at the top level, uh, my friends who work with pro athletes, NBA players, Mm -hmm. will talk about at the top level, those guys are hyped about. Yeah, all the things. When the best athletes can perform well in crucial championship games or things like that because they are that intense in practice. They're that intense all the time. They don't just like turn it up. For a specific no. type of performance. It's just, or, that's, they turn it up yeah. at practice. Yeah, but all the time. So they show up to practice, or so if, I know Jamie's a photographer, um, when you show up and you're just like walking around with a friend, screwing around, like be engaged in those moments. Yeah. And then in the moments that someone's paying you a lot, all you have to do is just be yourself. Like you've already practiced that a yeah. million times. Um, and that, I think we've seen that between you and I, like the higher the bigger jobs or projects or clients that we work on, the more we're surprised of like, oh, this just feels like what we do. Yeah. Um, it's not that difficult or it's not that it's not difficult. It's, yeah. it can become normal if you're practicing intensely. So that's like, I think that's a good, what Emily said, I think is a great thing to think about. I would also say if you find yourself being very bored Mm -hmm. with whatever craft you're in, yeah. it's going to be hard for you to yeah. get better at that or like doing yeah. it. Like if you find like working on editing photos, like I hate that. Right. Then that's, that's all thing. don't I, sign up to do that. I will say because this theme is below the surface, like my answer felt a little vague. I think there's a lot of work that I still do that I'm not, that I am doing because I need to pay the bills and the people. Um, there are many times where I look at you, Adam, and I th- say, I don't really want to do this right now, but this pays well, and I respect the person that I'm working for, but this work yeah. isn't inspiring me. The difference is, and I think this is sort of what I was getting to, I set up my day and my schedule to be something that is very enjoyable. So I'm not starting work at 7 a.m. and leaving at 8 p.m., mm-hmm. Um, I wear whatever I want to work. I take a break if I need to. 
the days that are more intense are more intense, but you, life isn't all about this like concept of you have to make something amazing. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I would say is creating work for yourself outside of work. Yeah. Um, is a that must. you're not, go- yeah. that you know you can't sell yet. Yeah. People maybe don't understand it or it's just not, it's not a commodity. Um, there's photo shoots that I do that I'm not excited about doing, but then I do a photo shoot for myself that is very exciting. Yeah. I can think it's just because Jamie knows us, but the, the portrait work you've been doing most recently, Mm -hmm. um, that you're doing with you by three and collaborating with other photographers, that was one of the first ever photo shoots that you did where you paid for lighting mm-hmm. just to rent over the weekend just for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like there was, that was no client. There was and, no... And that was like three months before I actually ever did the side project. Yeah. Like I was just experimenting. And so, but I said this, I keep referring to the panel that I was on, but you can't do that if you're broke. You right. can't, you have to sell your services. Yeah. And I see a lot of people and I'm, I can go into a tangent, but I won't, but I see a lot of people spending a lot of time with their peers um, and only displaying their work to people who already can do that thing. And yeah. you really have to work to get your work out in front of people who have the money to pay you. And so, um, Jamie, even in your instance, we're talking directly to you. Isn't this awesome? Yeah. Hopefully she listens. Um, starting to take your portrait work to the next level and, and photographing people who are in their thirties or their forties who are like, this is valuable. I would pay $500 yeah. for this is different than someone who's in college. Yeah. Um, and you can still do your creative work with your peers, but then sell that. Yeah. Oh, so true. If she started doing portraits of people who are like 40. Mm-hmm. And they look as amazing as her photos always look. Yeah. It would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Go Jamie. That's smart. Go. But yeah. that's, I think the other thing you think of is like, think of the, what's your motivation? That's mm-hmm. like a cheesy acting line, right? Yeah. Like, what's my motivation? Yeah. Um, is, in those moments where you're doing work that isn't like, you know, if if you were if you were just making up your own sort of creative projects mm-hmm. to work on, when you're doing stuff for other people, for clients, part of the reason they pay you is because you're helping them. It's not just yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, and so if you can tap into a motivation to serve and take care of and help people yes. and think through the difference it will make for them rather than just yourself and like, I don't like this or yeah. this is boring or this is stupid or I would do this differently. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can think through that, it helps you. One, well, it's very gratifying to help other people and to enjoy that. There's like a joy that comes from serving people. Yeah. Um, but two, it also puts you in a position to say, you know, in this time when I'm doing my client projects, I am bringing my creativity to the table, but I am serving other people yeah. ultimately. Yeah. Um, and I want to take care of them. I want them to have a good experience. I want them to feel... Yeah, cared about and paid attention to, and but I also want them to feel like they get my, um, like my creative work and interpretation. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and if that doesn't resonate with you, if you feel like you're working for, you know, a pharmaceutical company to make brochures, which I once did, you know, six years, seven, eight years ago, yeah. um, maybe the payment that you're getting by doing boring work allows you to give back in your everyday life. So when you aren't desperate or broke, you have more, you have the ability to give more. And whether that's like, you can just volunteer on the weekends because you don't have to work all weekend or something, but just constantly thinking about being thankful and having gratitude for the paid work can manifest itself and, um, you know, become something else in your, I think, and you can even say in, in, uh, like, like, fine art in mm-hmm. that world where an artist and an abstract painter can command like $10,000 for a painting or something like that yeah, and can make significant money off of one piece where they're kind of like doing their own thing and then people pay for that. Yeah. People are paying, you know, a person is paying for that experience of, of that interaction with the artist. So you can even kind of be selfish and self-centered in your creativity and there's a, a number of people who actually just enjoy that. That's yeah. fun for them. Right. Um, that was how when we're, we're sitting in the, the new conference room, yeah, which I call the magic room. We are. We've never recorded a podcast episode after we had this room renovated. Yeah. I wish um, you all could see it. We'll show notes it. 
we'll it looks show amazing. notes the room. Yeah. But in working with Brian and Catherine of Mixed Design Collective, also beginning in the middle is their like Instagram thing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but in working with them, they they didn't approach this like construction workers or no. like contractors. They approached this like artists. They pitched us a concept that was way better than anything. Oh, and yeah. And it was fun to work with them. Yeah. And every day they'd be like, I would watch them start working on stuff and be like, oh, this isn't working. So I'm going to rework this and adjust this. And we tore down the ceiling and found out, okay, so what are we going to do now? And that yeah. was, it was fun to sit on the other side of the creative process and to let other people do their just thing. do their thing. Yeah. And at the end of it, I started to get frustrated with them in that I was like, I just want you to do whatever. Yeah, they would ask wanna... me like, hey, do you think we should stain this wood? I was like, what do you think we should do? Right. I don't want you to ask me about stuff anymore. Just do whatever you think. True. And it turned out awesome. And it's fun to let someone else be creative. Yeah. Um, And my last point. Yeah. Is because we know how we make money, because we know who we are, because we have work, we weren't sitting around picking apart their work. Yeah. And I think if you're about to work with someone else, as a creative person, or if you're about to hire someone who's creative, you are better served to be in a good place before going into that project. Yeah. So if you need to take like three days and get some good sleep and, you know, wait till you get paid or a client pays you to pay your creative person, all of that is, that's like, be a good human, you know? Yeah. And I think if we had worked with them three years ago, we would have been a little crazier or a little more stressed out. And it just, it worked out. And so nothing's over, nothing happens overnight and treat, and treat people well. I think that balance is going to look different for everyone. And yeah, that's what's fun about it is it's, it's always changing. Um, so when it comes to this season, uh, producer Michael and I talked about it, we won't be doing celebrity headlines. I wasn't part of that conversation. So don't blame me <laughs> with, for all that. It was, we, we still will like mix in, you know, we talked about Aaron Carter today, above my pay grade, but we're going to have a special, like a special section in each episode where it's just Adam and I answering a couple questions. So throughout the season, anyone can email us at podcast at the wonderjam.com. Yep. They can direct message us on any social media, comment, whatever. Right. Um, questions about like things pertaining to below the surface. So things that you are curious about that you don't feel like a lot of small business owners are talking about. Um, but they can be casual, fun stuff too. Yeah. Um, I think that'll be a really fun way to answer the questions of people, whereas I feel like the interviews will answer questions that people didn't even maybe know they had. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be really cool because I, yeah, we so much want, we want people, we want the people who listen to this to get the answers they want. Yeah. And so hopefully this will help. Mm-hmm. And we'll be able to answer some of our owns. Our owns. Our owns. <laughs> our owns. Our own. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I'm excited about that. And yeah, the lineup for this season is really awesome. We have everything scheduled. And basically the reason we're not doing celebrity headlines isn't because we don't like celebrity headlines. It's just that we'll be recording some up to a month before it actually airs. Airs. Um, Goes live. Because we're getting better at scheduling things because producer Michael, has his powers are growing stronger. Yes. And last, last time we... Well, last season he was... An intern, he's not In an intern. In season one, he was a mere intern. And now he's not. And now he is a... Person. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a very good boy. <laughs> so thank you for listening, and we will see you slash talk to you next week. Peace. <laughs>